we have here is our sweet chestnut. It's an old tree, it's been in the garden since before we came here, so it's an old estate tree. And we really wanted to try and keep this tree for another generation, or maybe two or three generations. Now you can see on the piece in front of us, you can see how important it is for the biodiversity. You can see there's a, a sort of white uh, blob halfway up on the stem. That's an old bracket fungus of Lady Porus, chicken in the woods, and that causes brown rot. So it rots the inside of the tree, but doesn't affect the actual vitality of the tree. So it forms the hollows, and those hollows are inhabited by, in this case, we have our woodpeckers, maybe we have bats, but we also have owls on site. So they can use these little niche environments that they decay, and actually the tree uh, being older is forming. So here we have a piece of the tree, and this is a piece that Paul and Chris cut away. And what's quite interesting with this is we can actually see the hole from a woodpecker. And it's not making a nest in this case. What it's actually doing is actually searching for grubs. And we can see on the inside, we've got the beginnings of chambers where the grubs were. And you can actually see where, they've, uh, where the woodpecker's gone in and been fishing around for the grubs, which is really good. Cool. But the dark brown on this is actually a decay fungus. And it causes what we call a cubicle brown rot. And that's why I was explaining to you, it actually starts to work on the heartwood. And this is what this brown staining is. And inside, as the timber starts to break up, it starts to break up into little cubes. Hence its name, cubicle brown rot. What it does do is, although the vitality of the tree is not affected, the structural strength of the tree is affected. And so it can be prone to fractures, which is why there's a lot more work has been done and reduction work on the branch which has the disease. Old trees in a collection that we have in Edinburgh are important for us. There's a few things, and one of the obvious things may be historical. So it shows the age of the area we're in. But the other important thing um, with old, especially veteran trees within a collection, is that they can be used uh, potentially for recognition of diseases or resistance against diseases. And we've been working on a program, not with Sweet Chesson, but with actually uh, witch elms around Edinburgh. And it's the old veteran trees, the bigger old trees, that seem to have a vitality and enough about them to actually survive this. So we're able to propagate from those and actually keep disease resistance through. So it's really important for those, not just biodiversity, but actually for what they are genetically.